to, uh, to be here. Um, so I'm here to talk to you a little bit about a uh, very large project that we have going on uh, in your region, um, in particular along Highway 7, but uh, it also includes the M Street Corridor. Um, and I'm sure most of you have heard of it as our uh, even next rapid transit project. Um, it also includes a number of uh, cycling, cycling elements that uh, we're planning. So I'm here to talk to you about that today and uh, how we, um, I guess, communicate, consult, and collaborate to try to pull this sort of project in this. So just a quick outline I'd like to give you, uh, since we're south of Steeles, I thought I might have to give you a little bit of an <laughs> overview of your region. Um, talk to you about some of the things we're, we're already doing with cycling, um, our VMNX rapid transit project, um, some, some points about Highway 7 in particular, what our design alternatives were, and the steps we went through uh, or going through uh, to try to communicate our plans and solve the stakeholders and to work together to build this project. So York Region, who are we? Um, we're located uh, just north of the city of Toronto, north of the Steelers Avenue boundary. Um, we are a uh, second tier uh, municipal government, similar to um, kind of Metro Toronto and the former cities prior to uh, amalgamation. Um, your region is made up of nine uh, different local municipalities uh, Vaughan, Richmond Hill, Markham, uh, King, uh, Richard Stouffville, Aurora, Newmarket. And uh, it's the city of Bonn that says it's the city of Bonn. <laughs> so what are we known for? Uh, New York region is known for, um, so it's really a mix of both rural and urban areas. So we have a lot of King Township, a lot of farmland and, and horses. I think it's, it's uh, heard it called the, the largest number of horses per capita anywhere in the world in King Township. Um, lots of lots of forests and, and uh, parkland, and uh, also a lot of places to live. And uh, it's, it's yeah, the, the nature of those uh, those residential areas is, is changing very rapidly. So the past, and uh, arguably still the current, I think, unfortunately, is that uh, York Region is also known for uh, its urban sprawl. We are, I would say, York Region is the, the front line of uh, any kind of battle against sort of the spread of, uh, of suburban uh, single family uh, development it takes up lots of space, low density, and uh, York Region has a lot of it. And because of that, it makes it very difficult uh, to encourage any kind of cycling activity. So try to, try to find a picture of a completely empty bike rack. There are a few there, um, but it is hard to get people to, to get people uh, to consider cycling as a mode of transportation in a, in a region that's so car, uh, really car dominated. So our future, or at least we hope it's our future, um, a lot more uh, high density uh, development of the Viva Next project along Highway 7 and, uh, and Young Street is uh, planning to bring uh, rapid transit, a very high order transit service to those corridors. And uh, the hope and the plan, and we're counting on it, um, is, that, is that that higher order transit service is going to bring uh, higher density development along, along these corridors. And uh, that in itself will help us try to promote uh, other alternative modes of transportation uh, to get people around the region. So cycling in York region, um, there's already a lot of good things uh, happening between uh, the region and our local municipalities. Um, we've we've uh, been installing uh, bicycle lanes on some of our regional roads. Local municipalities have, have been uh, doing a lot of work with, with bicycle lanes on their roads, bike and, bike and bus programs, and uh, you may notice copies of our uh, cycling map out in the, uh, the hallway if you'd like to grab one for yourselves. The Even X program, I already mentioned, is along Highway 7 and Young Street, uh, dedicated right away for rapid transit. It's a, a $1.5 billion capital investment uh, for mutual dollars uh, through Metrolinx to build uh, this new uh, transit service, provide fast, frequent, and uh, reliable transit along these, uh, these main corridors. So whenever we talk about cycling on Highway 7, one of the first questions that comes up is at the title of the slide there. 
that's kind of really <laughs> um, It's a six lane cross section, um, and we're adding two additional lanes in the center of the roadway. Um, carries about 50,000 vehicles a day. A day. We've done uh, bike counts, uh, hoping to find cyclists out there, and uh, for, the, for the most part, for the most part, they are non-existent. Lots of trucks, lots of cars, high speeds. Um, it is not, it is not um, an ideal cycling environment by any means. And I heard Mia this morning talking about the three different categories of cyclists. I think there's probably a fourth category that would describe the. Uh, Cyclists that would use highway seconds as a <laughs> The good news is we're we're hoping to transform it. We need to transform it. We want to make it a place that feel people feel comfortable riding. Um, but we know that um, we're beyond the point where we can. It's not the type of road where we where we can put up bike route signs or paint the line and and. Uh, open it up and call it call it a day and say we're done. There's a lot of things that need to happen on this road to get the speeds down, narrow the lanes, provide cyclists with, with a safe and comfortable place to, uh, to ride. So we came up with a number of different design alternatives uh, to consider and, and trying to find uh, the right mix for, uh, for this roadway. And there are many different options. So the point of the presentation, communication, consultation, collaboration, when you look online, you see photos like this to describe it. Um, my experience has been. <laughs> but sometimes, but sometimes it looks a little more like the picture at the bottom. <laughs> it, is not, it has not always been pretty. There, uh, there are as many different opinions as there are stakeholder groups, and it's a real challenge to try to, to bring all those groups together and come up with, with uh, a design that, at the end of the day, are going where most people will be happy. We have so many partners, all our local municipalities, uh, transit authorities, uh, all the different road users, pets, cyclists, drivers, transit riders, uh, developers want things, utility companies want things. Uh, it's very hard to meet, it's, it's impossible to meet all the needs of all of these people. So, um, I'm not sure if I've painted the best picture of how we uh, how we went through consulting and collaboration. It hasn't it hasn't been uh, it hasn't been an easy road. But I think just to wrap up the real point of my presentation is no way you can't please everyone. Um, there's always going to be um, certain groups that are not happy with the final outcome. And uh, the only thing is we really try to remember our mission, remember what we're trying to do. Uh, don't shy away from tough decisions when it comes time to telling somebody that they're not getting what they want, um, you need to confront it right on and, and, uh, and deal with it. And above all, just listen to what people have to say, even if you don't agree. Um, just sitting down face to face and hearing them out, understanding their point of view seems to go a long way. Um, and hopefully at the end of the day, you end up with more happy people than unhappy people. Thank you. Great.